Shalom everyone. We thank God for this beautiful Sunday. Uh, there was really encouraging news that uh, uh, our brothers and sisters in uh, Andhra Pradesh state of India, uh, some many hundred people probably uh, more than 500 people, I believe. Uh, they have a very large church there. And uh, they had uh, this, uh, they carried this uh, torch of international Sharon Games. And uh, many of our churches, sister churches, uh, say they want to carry this, uh, this hour. Uh, torch of international shalom games and uh, participate in this uh, international shalom games in our conference and uh, uh, some of pastors are also preparing message too so it's very encouraging and uh, let's sing him 455 be still my soul the Lord is on your side
Psalm 90, verse 1 to 4, in English. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a <clears throat> watch in the night. Verse 12 and 13 in Polish. Naucze nas obliczać dni naszych, abyśmy przywiedli serce do mądrości. Nawrócze się, Panie, dokądże odwłaczasz. Zlitujże się nad sługami Twymi. Amen. Please join me in reading verse 12 through 17. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servant. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years that we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to your children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The prayer of Moses, the man of God. This is how commentator of the Bible wrote. Very wonderful words of God. Okay, this time please rise if you are able. And let us sing him 91. My shepherd will supply my needs. The Lord meets our needs, and we are praying for our messengers for our uh, this uh, Christ-like leadership conference. Also, uh, shalom prayers, and also this uh, artist, performing artist for our. Tuesday night, Tuesday Eve. Okay.
Please be seated. Please join me in invocation. O oh God, the founder of life, to a humanity parched with thirst, you offer the living water of grace, which springs up from the rock, our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant your people the gift of your spirit, that we may learn to profess our faith with courage and announce the joy, the wonder of your love. Amen. These days, many are suffering and troubled because of some detailers and the rising and the cancellating their power. But we pray that God may raise up many Josephs pray to God and change the world and lead people to God. Uh, <clears throat> last several months we studied uh, Joseph's Christ-like leadership through Genesis chapter 37 and 50. And uh, we wonder, ah, this, who is this God of Joseph? And uh, so we are now returning to Genesis chapter 1 and uh, we want to learn about the God of Joseph in a deeper level, deeper way. And uh, later, and uh, after Christmas and many things, so we may have a chance to complete it. Then we can go to uh, Exodus. And uh, so that God may form great spiritual community among God's people, among us. So this time, okay, today's passage is from Genesis chapter 1, 1 through 13. We are going to begin to study about the name of God. Mary will lead us in today's passage. Today's scripture reading is Genesis 1, 1 through 13. Let's read responsibly. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And, and God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are so thankful to God that God 
shows us his wonderful creation. What kind of wonderful world he created us. Why he created us. And who is this God who created the universe and his people. And uh, may God bless us to really know this is so beautiful. Just a beautiful life-giving world view. Uh, may God really know and see this beautiful world of God. Let us sing him here. This is my father's world. 57. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you that you give us your word. You show us who you are through your word. O oh God, our Father, open our eyes so that we may see wonderful word, wonderful God, this word through your word. May the Holy Spirit give us understanding and strengthen us. Fill our church with the Word of God so that many people may come and learn of God and receive life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> our title is The Name of God. Elohim. God has many names. That doesn't mean that there are many gods. There are one and only God. But God has many names. These many different names especially shed light to certain characteristics of God. 
So in studying Genesis, we'll make them think about this name of God. In today's passage, the name of God is Elohim. For example, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in original Hebrew is Rishet Bara Elohim. Eight, Ha Shemai, Ha Shemai, Bet Ha Aret. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. In Genesis chapter 2, 4 through the end, we see name of God, Yahweh Elohim. Later, God revealed himself to Abraham, eternal God. Yeah. Yes, Elohim, Olam. For many is later, God revealed himself. Moses again, when Israel people forgot about God's name for many, many years, Moses asked him, what is your name? God gave him a very interesting name. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was very surprising. <clears throat> How could the glorious God introduce himself in terms of his people. But God was like that, his personal God. God also said, I am who I am, this way, Yahweh. I shall be who I shall be. Today, we want to think about this name of God, Elohim. It's plural, very interesting. But its verb is singular, third person singular. Purishet, para, para is created. That's singular. Yes. Elohim, this plural name. Okay. Eight, ha shemaim, the heavens, by eight. And Haaretz, the land, the earth. Yes. That means user people just talked about El, the mighty God. But in Genesis chapter 1, God's name is plural Elohim, heavens is plural, Shamaim, Im is plural, and waters are plural, Maim. That means heavens or waters, infinite. So many drops of water in the ocean, so many. So many points in heavens, infinite. And God, even though He is one and only God, He is with every creation of His. It's amazing. Jesus said, God knows how many hairs we have. God is with you. Every cell of you, God is with every leaf of a tree. God is, is every wave in the ocean. God is everywhere with his creation. That means God loves his creation so much. Yes, we hear about Michelangelo, great this painter sculptor, he was painting this great painting on the ceiling of Sister Chapel. Very difficult. He had lion right there. Right here, the next note, he fell down. 
but you who are gaining thing. He loves this each, each part of this great work. God loves each part of you. This is very important for us to know. God is with every cell within you. Every thought of yours. So may God strengthen you with this word of God because our God is infinite and yet he cares for each of you, each of us, every creation. That's a, just is so amazing. This God is so wonderful, so it's so exciting to talk about this God. Many people say, where was God before the creation? That's a very good question. Actually, scientists said, universe began with one single point. But 13.7 billion years ago, everything was packed, so dense, so high temperature. Then suddenly there was a big bang, and exploded everywhere. As universe expanded, cooled down temperature, then atoms began to appear, then electrons, all those things. <laughs> Cells, then light shone, then all these other things happen. Bible is not a science book, but Bible, Bible doesn't really ridicule science. No. If science explains material universe, science is not perfect, I know. It's History of science shows that this cosmology has always uh, improved or changed or whatever. Yeah. Uh, my point is, if science deals with energy, this physical world, Bible talks about God nature in humanity bible shows us god created universe as his temple and god created his people as his kings prophet and priest so that they might, might take care of all creations with the mind of god care of god authority so this is really amazing. Let me answer the question. Where was God before the universe began? If, if you as scientists, what was there before Big Bang? They say, we don't know. We cannot say anything. Because we cannot go back before that. We cannot go behind that. No. Scientists say, Universe is expanding in the time of Big Bang, expanding it's faster than speed of light. And uni as the universe expands, it becomes cools down, the temperature goes down, 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 and everything freezing. Everything is freezing. Ah, oh, this is very, very doesn't give us hope. But so if somebody asks, what is, what is there outside of the universe? Scientists say the universe is finite. It's not infinite. It's finite, but unbounded. What is there outside of the universe? Then scientists say, we don't know. Because we cannot go out of it. What does the Bible say? Bible says in 
in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and actually in other part of the Bible says God created heavens and the earth and everything in it that means God was outside the universe before universe it's amazing how could God be outside of the universe? Was there space? No. Even space and time were created by God. And even scientists say when Big Bang occurred, psh, at that time space and time came out. Yeah. At first everything was in the point. Point doesn't have space or time. You don't need to location. Yeah. God was there before the universe. This is an amazing thing. This is amazing. That means God is greater than the universe. God created the universe. And God is eternal. Today we see Joseph read the red psalm. 90 verse 1 and 2. Moses said, Lord, you have been our dwelling place, a home before mountains of born. Before universe was made, you were our home. Isn't it amazing? From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. From everlasting, we go back to past. 13 billion years ago, everlasting, God was there. You are our God. In the to the future, we go. Everlasting. 5.5 billion years we go. By the time the earth is destroyed, that's what scientists said. Sun will disappear, earth will melt everything. Keep on going. Everlasting, everlasting, everything frozen. But God is there. And interestingly, really, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. You have been our home. Before God created the universe, that means he carried you and us in his heart. Isn't it amazing? That's why the Bible says, even before the creation of the world, God planned to send Jesus and to help us, save us, help us, to bring us to, home, to himself. That means we came from God, our home, and during our lifetime on earth, we work with God. We do wonderful things. God has given us to take care of all the universe, take care of universe like, you know, a wonderful gardeners take care of their garden and work with God. Grow in love of God, loving each other, all these things, and complete. And then we go back to our home, our eternal God. This is the Bible just gives us a, just an amazing picture, a world view. Oh my God, this is just, yeah. it's amazing. This gives us a saving picture. This God is just all loving. But He's capable. There are some good people loving, but some fathers cannot take care of their family, so they will feel sorry and the family suffers. But our God is infinitely capable, almighty. He's just, He educates us, this brings us, grows up. He doesn't leave us to be spoiled. 
It's amazing, yeah. And he forgives us, cares us, lifts us up, carries us on his back. It's just a uh, incredible. When we think about this God, life changes. Wow, oh, this every day is really exciting moment. Now let's move to verse two. Okay. Before God created light, what was the situation of the universe? This is very interesting. There was earth, there was water. Darkness was there, void, confusion or all the things. But Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And Spirit of God, when you look at the Genesis chapter 1, God created the universe. Spirit of God was there, giving power, energy. God spoke, commanded, word of God was there. And Bible also said God created, made, action is there. It's a triune, three in one. Yes, and this word is like the Bible says, Jesus, in the beginning was the word, and was the word was with God, and the word was God. It's amazing here. Some people may say, oh, why did God allow darkness, void, emptiness? Aren't they very evil, bad? A uh, professor, John Walton of uh, Whitman College, a very great professor of Old Testament, he is an expert of uh, ancient Near Eastern studies like that. He wrote many great points, but he made one mistake, I mean, number of mistakes, but one thing. He said, this darkness, void, this emptiness, do not have any function. But actually, God didn't create anything that doesn't have any significance of me. Whatever God created, they had a role. Yes. Also, when God created the light, God didn't eliminate the darkness. If darkness, you are very... No. Book of Isaiah said, actually, God created light as well as darkness. Darkness was first there. Here, darkness, emptiness, Void all the things in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 is not darkness of sin. Sin was not there yet. This is more, it's like a canvas before your beautiful painting is there. It's like a dark stage before you perform your piano playing or dancing or singing. Yes, some people may say, oh, that empty dark stage, that's bad. No, it's because empty stage, dark stage is there, light is turned on, actors, actresses come and perform. It's very, it has very important role. So, in John chapter 3, ch chapter 9, Jesus' disciples and Jesus were working in Jerusalem and they asked, they saw this, a man born blind from birth. He was in the darkness before he was born. He was in darkness when he was born. He was living in darkness. Everything is difficult. Life was hard. They asked Jesus, why is he born blind? Is it because of his sins? 
or his parents yet? Did God make him blind because of his specific sin or his parents' specific sin? That's what people at the time thought that this man was cursed by God or his parents. God cursed his parents. So that's why this boy was born with blindness. But Jesus denied. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. His blindness is not because of his specific sin or his parents' specific sin. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. His blindness is the stage in which God's brilliant work of creation will be shown. We need to really know this. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven, darkness cast out, meaning is given to us. So we should always believe that. So, but still in our daily life, we face darkness, confusion, void, many things. At the time, we need to pray to God. God, Creator, please create wonderful things in my life. And like King David said, create in me a pure heart. Yeah, he says, create, create me a sincere repentant heart. Create a pure spirit. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. Bible says, actually, God dwells in this time of type of darkness. Yes. God appeared in the midst of dark cloud on Mount Sinai. God's place in the temple, the Holy of Holies, has no lamp in it. It's dark. Yeah. So, let's see. God created light in the first day. Some people asked, what is this day? Day, first day, second day, or in ancient times, in ancient times, when people believed that God wanted to live among them, so they built this temple. When temple was built, it took many years. Temple of the Herod, we know that it took us 46 years for it to be completed. Yeah. When temple was built, that many, many years of construction of the things, and it was inaugurated in seven days. Yes. On the first day, some articles of temple was sanctified. And last of all, priest was anointed. Then on the seventh day, they believe their God comes to the temple, dwells there, and begins to reign, begins to rule, begins to give blessings. That's how Bible talks about here. Yeah. So we do not need to be confused between the Word of God and many other teachings. Uh, it shows God really a, a created light and ordained it to have the role of light. Role of light is showing things and uh, so that you know all other creation that comes after the main sea and uh, the have direction uh, yes so this is uh, really really wonderful yeah God but then God created the light God didn't eliminate darkness light is called day Darkness was called night because there is a light and there is a darkness 
spirit to it. It's like music. Music only as a music, no, like it only sound. <laughs> that will be hard to hear anybody. But there is a sound and there is a rest. Then there's rest. This way is beautiful music. It's same thing. So God made really beautiful everything. Then we see this. Uh, some people may ask, how could light exist before sun or stars were made? Uh, actually, we know even before sun rises, even even when there is no moonlight or starlight, still actually there is some light. We know that. Yeah. So yes, uh, God created stars and those things later to rule over light. But before those things, there was light. Yes. So. Yes, also, medical doctor. How is medical doctor becomes medical doctor? Does medical doctor becomes medical doctor suddenly overnight? No. In some cases, six years of training, then they need to take a test, and then they pass all the things, then they are given this license. Then, from that time, we call them doctor. Before getting a license, if one practices like that, then they are not allowed against the law. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. So, yes. So, and uh, second, second day, God created expanse. In the beginning, I mean, the, before God created light, there was earth, but it was covered with water, flooded. And God made the expanse and separated water above the expanse and water below the expanse. Actually, this expanse, oh, firmament, because this was very strong. So water above the firmament doesn't come down. And this expanse was called the sky. Actually, in Hebrew, the original word, the sky is the same as heavens. So in some translations, it God made heavens. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Oh, I thought that God made heavens first and the earth later. No. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Simply says God created everything in the universe. Yeah. These heavens were made to separate water below the heavens and water above the heavens. Water below the heavens give water to all living creatures or plant everything like will, people who will be created later. Water above the heavens would be used uh, in training people. So in the time of Noah, water over the heavens would come down. It's very interesting. But then some people may ask, why does the Bible say later God dwells in heavens? God doesn't need universe to dwell. He was happy before the universe was there. He will be happy when the universe is not there. God has no housing problem. Then why did God come down to heavens? This is where the creation thing, because God cares for all his creation. That's why he, Lord himself, came down from heaven and in John chapter 1, 14, we learn that God 
with the logos, came down, Lee were the human body and lived among tent. Same tent, same house. Yeah. Because he wanted to save us. He wanted to show his love, his good. That's why. But in Genesis chapter 1, already we are amazed. Oh my God. God made heaven so beautiful. And on the third day, God created the land. God separates water under the expanse, separate water, and the land appeared. We see God forms order, and it's very interesting. God said, let the land produce vegetation, and land produce all kind of creation. God gave land power to participate in God's creative work. God made the land his partner. That's amazing. Let the land produce all this vegetation, lay land animals, all things. God really doesn't do everything by himself, even though he can do. He let his servants participate in his work. It's amazing. It's, it's very amazing. Yes, God, and God made the diverse universe. Let the land produce vegetation. Land understood God's mind and created all different, all different kind of a plant and everything. Diverse. God loves diversity. This is very important thing for us. We often reject the people when they are different from us. But actually God loves diverse things. That's a very important thing. Universe means one plus diverse. It's very diverse, but one in God. As long as others believe in God, serve God, follow Jesus, wish they accept, bless, pray for them. And uh, it's very, very important thing and uh, recently the scientists discovered that they discovered a new species of whale in Mexico yeah it was there was some mutation so new species of whale was found but one year ago something then there was this uh, spill of petroleum by accident, 20% of them died. Now this new species well is on the verge of extinction. I think the heart of God is very broken. And uh, people wish to be really care for nature this way because this nature is God's creation. We have no right to destroy it. No, our responsibility is to protect them, keep them, so that these diverse creatures may thrive. That's our responsibility. If we just uh, uh, just damn the environment, kills all those things, we lose the ground of our existence. That's really against God. That's why this world is so much trouble now. All this coronavirus, all these things, because people. Have, are, have been ruining this and uh, also in the world. So may God help us to really, really know this God who cares us, cares each creation we may, and who made this wonderful world. We may know God, love God, and serve His course. May God bless you and Really, we are wonderful people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you are our creator, you are our God, you are our home. Oh Lord, help us. Many are suffering because they do not know this God. Help us to really, really introduce this God to them, in, help us to encourage them so that they may find salvation, happiness, 
and the life in this cup. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. We have a beautiful God. Let's sing him 75 bilingual hymns, the spacious firmament on high. This in our web service packet. <clears throat>
let us pray. Gracious God, we love you, O God. You are such a wonderful God, our Creator. You carried us in your heart from eternity. You care for us. You watch over us. O oh God, you created us to care for things. We are grateful to you. Out of gratitude, we bring this offering to you and we praise it. God, please bless this and use it, O oh God, in your great redemptive work, the work of our recreating. In Father, O oh God, our Father, so many are suffering because they do not know you. Oh God, because they do not know your love and power. Oh Lord, please, O oh God, reveal yourself, use us in really, me, Father, uh, sharing your word with others. Please use this offering in bringing you to many people whose suffering is beyond our description. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. We thank God that God has, uh, really, uh, God is moving the heart of people, so they will come this Tuesday uh, for our this, uh, uh, Performing Arts Eve uh, for our this, uh, Sustainable Worldwide Mission Conference. Uh, uh, so far, about seven or eight artists, uh, and uh, we have this uh, wonderful performance. Um, so please pray that God may bless our this Tuesday, uh, this uh, Eve conference Eve uh, with the music. Poetry reading, and uh, uh, we like to have a reception at 5 p.m. because some people, uh, when they finish work, and uh, it's hard for them to go home and then come back to our music concert and uh, performance at 6 p.m. So we have a uh, the, this. Uh, uh, reception at 5. Also, some people at uh, eating some food, those of time, we can show them some of this uh, well, in Shalom games. They can even participate. Uh, so, please pray that God may bless this uh, Tuesday event. Uh, okay, then uh, please pray there. Uh, yeah, from Wednesday to Saturday, uh, we have this uh, uh, our conference. We have some here the uh, Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. Uh, some of games will be played there, and. Uh, then uh, Sunday, also in many of our, our overseas churches, they do many things, some carrying torch and some people playing some games, some games like that. Then Sunday, we will have a service and then uh, a word like ceremonies in this place. And uh, so, We'll discuss about when we'll have this uh, open, this, this de declare open your conference. Maybe right after our Tuesday music concert here, or yeah, we'll discuss about that. Yeah, thank you. And uh, then also, please pray that God may raise up 
this messengers okay well joseph's christ-like leadership okay yes also yes um some games were played and the, the in some countries they are playing the also the championship matches too okay so please pray that god may grant us journey mercy uh, to when we go down to mammoth cave national park and uh, have some games or shalom hiking or other things that god may also really help us this is uh, not just a one-time thing but ongoing this uh, shalom games become our daily life in god so uh, that's why the, many people are very interested in performing this and doing this so we may really uh, our this ministry may continue to go and reach out yeah. uh, okay looks like this year we'll have the more people will participate worldwide actually than last year yeah. thank you very much let me give you benediction oh how unsearchable the wisdom of god how amazing god's power and the love oh lord we are so amazed how god loves us cares for his creation and even sent his son jesus christ and uh, we are so grateful to you bless your people with this wonderful presence of god oh may god strengthen us now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us when we work with Him. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.